to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to sort through the numbers in the Arizona real estate market, see if we can make sense of it. The worst thing that could happen is that uh, I'll bore you to tears with the same numbers every week. So <laughs> we only have today 4,957 homes on the market, kind of a broken record. Uh, we're going to take a look a little bit here of uh, days of supply and compare it to some other years and then kind of glean over a little bit of Cromford data and show you uh, what's happening in this market. And what's happening is that buyers are starting to back off. Um, rates have gone up. Rates are running about 4.1 uh, right now, 4.10. And let's see, let me see what it is. Um, yeah, about 4.10. But the investors are not. <clears throat> so we're gonna take a little look at that and see what's going on. Uh, in the meantime, what we do see is that uh, our days of inventory and I'm going to show you this little peak right here. See that down here shows 28, 28 days. Now, if we take a little deeper dive into that and we look at, at years past, 28 days certainly is not very many, uh, very many homes on the market. Go back to 2005 and you can see that we had 86 days. So in 2005, things really started to get out of hand as far as how many homes were for sale and the pace of which these homes were being gobbled up. Now, if you look here, this is 2020. Why did it spike up here? Well, look at the date there, that's March. Remember, stay home, two weeks, flatten the curve. That's what happened. So we ended up with 58 days of supply, climbed up to 68 days, and then it's been down, down, down from there. And in 2020, we reached a peak of like 39 days on the market. And what days on the market means is if no other listings come up, if no other listings come on the market, then we'll be out of homes in 28 days. But watch this, what happened in 2006 that everybody ignored. 2006, we had 228 days of homes, 228 days of inventory. And <clears throat> prices were still going up, but people were just gobbling them up like crazy. And then in 2007, they went even higher, 373 days. Now, keep in mind, at this point in the real estate cycle, prices were not coming down. People were scooping them up. And then it fell off the map. And then we had 425 homes, 425 days on market in 2008. So you can see that it takes a huge increase in inventory, days on market, before prices start to come down. And we're not seeing prices budge at all yet. So let me show you a little bit here, talking about what the Cromford market is saying on the data that we're seeing so far. And I'm just gonna summarize it here. He says, because of the large amount of money being invested in the multifamily sector, you know, apartments, our expectation is the supply of multifamily units will eventually balance with the demand much earlier than for single family units. In other words, there'll be far more apartments than there will be houses. That means that the market for single family homes, our primary focus, is likely to stay healthy for longer than the overall market. Single family homes are being removed from circulation for many reasons, such as more of them are being converted as long-term rentals. That's what we're seeing now, 26% of the homes being purchased right now are being converted to rentals. More of them are being converted to holiday rentals, Airbnb, short term. That's uh, still going on like crazy. Fewer sellers want to give up their cheap mortgages, which they would have to do if they moved. And that's a big deal. You're sitting in a 2.9% mortgage. You sell your house and buy a smaller one. Now you're paying 4.1. People want to stay, stay put. Large number of baby boomers are aging in place and not excited about moving home and this moving to another home at this late stage in their lives <clears throat> and i'm seeing a lot of that baby boomers now they have grandkids i've got a big house they don't need a big house but they know that if they sell that house and they get another one they're paying a higher mortgage they got a higher mortgage payment and now they don't have room for all the grandkids so they're just staying put saying you know i know i don't need all this space but it sure is nice when everybody comes over to visit so are we going to be able to build our way out of it well check this out the building kind of came to a halt in January. Builders said, We're, we can't get the materials. Uh, lumber's real tight. Cement is a problem. We're just going to put on the brakes for a while. 
and uh, they're putting on the brakes, and they're going to put on the brakes a little bit more now because nothing's coming from Canada. All the truckers are, you know, on strike. So that's, I think the January numbers are bad. Wait till you see the, the February numbers. And new construction, this is the number of new construction, new privately owned housing units authorized but not yet started. See that number? That's That chart is way up. So I'll show you a better view here. These are permits. These are homes that they're going to build, but they haven't started them yet. So they're out there. They want to build them, but they've decided against it for now. And uh, that's that's our dilemma. We want to um, we want to build more homes, but they can't get the materials, and they and they're, the price of new homes is going up like crazy. So the builders, rather than just you know exasperating themselves, are just saying we're just going to bail out for a while. We got to wait for this to to even out before we start putting more homes on the market. Now, luxury apartments are going bonkers. Here's a Scottsdale luxury apartment sold at a record price right there. And it says it's on uh, McDowell Road. And it's 365-unit luxury apartment community sold for $193.5 million or $543,000 per unit. Yeah, Terry says, just uh, drive to qualify. Good morning, Jackie. And good morning, Judy. Um the price per unit is the highest in the state's history for an institutionally sized apartment building. That's pretty wild. So uh, they, they've they got units average about 827, 827 square feet with monthly rental ranges between $1,400 and $3,000. And you know what? They're getting the price. I mean, they're getting that rental price. So it's uh, People are looking for places to rent. Now, rent could come down. That's going to be the thing that has to come down first before home prices come down. So if you see this increase in multifamily building like you are right now, boy, you drive through Gilbert, that's all you see. Just one apartment complex after another. And uh, um, eventually they're going to saturate the market. I always felt that Tempe was way overbuilt. And they're huge, huge luxury apartments. And I've never been able to equate college students with luxury but yet there they are all these huge luxury apartments right over the path of sky harbor airport planes are flying over you all day so um it's wild i kind of thought that market would would tank but it hasn't yet and uh so we're seeing here that uh oh construction housing permits backlogs rose in january according to the uh mortgage news daily they're saying the same thing resident Residential, residential construction numbers for January were mixed. Permits were up slightly from December, but starts fell back from December's near 12-point surge, and completions were down significantly from both December and January of last year. Now, what I'm seeing is in our seven-day moving average that it really doesn't seem to matter where we're at. It's if, it, if listings go up, number of homes under contract go up. So they just follow each other day after day so that's not uh, giving us any relief there and this to show you everybody says well it's everybody's moving here from california well that's true 19 percent of our buyers are from california but it's not just a local problem this is active inventory and uh this is uh by a guy called uh, oh gosh i can't remember calculated risk uh he tracks inventory and let's just look at albuquerque January of this year, they had 626 homes. Last year, they had 793. Year over year, their inventory is down 47.5%. Okay? And across the board here, Austin, Texas is only down 1.3% versus last year. But month over month, they're down 33.8%. Charlotte, North Carolina, down 43.9%. Colorado, I mean, look at these. Across the board, every city, Santa Clara, 574 homes this year, 1,336 last year, down 57%. So it's not just a local Arizona problem because everybody's moving here from California. It's all those other things that I mentioned that baby boomers don't want to move. Nobody wants to sell their home because they don't want a higher interest rate, bigger payment. They're just not listing their homes. So um, it, we're going to be in this situation for a while. So it's going to be um, the year of the buyer beat down probably again. Every time I go out, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity. So we're just going to continue to track these 
these numbers. And if you have any questions at all about the market, email me at rick at rickhelps.com or give me a call. I heard from a guy in uh, Irvine, California yesterday. So it's always nice to get those phone calls. I look and go, I don't recognize this number. And I love picking them up unless it says potential spam. Then I leave it alone. <laughs> Everybody have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow.